I moved to Sunbury 10 years ago, and I was already out at that point. But for much of my life, I was afraid about being gay, and I tried desperately to change it, which is not an uncommon story. I went through conversion therapy for 17 years in one form or another, hoping to become more masculine and heterosexual. And finally, in 1999, I came out gay. But there was a long process after that. It wasn't just like, yay, I'm out, it's cool. I had to get to the place of really accepting myself, and that took real therapy to undo the bad therapy. But the bottom line, I believed for too long that I would be more valuable to the world and to everybody else if I were more masculine and if I were straight. And that wasn't true. It actually was really harmful to me and other people in my life. I fell in love. I, uh, I'm a Quaker, and I was at a Quaker conference in Western PA, and I met this fabulous, handsome, smart guy who lived in a place that I never heard of called Sealands Grove. And we fell in love. And he brought me to the area, and I fell in love with the area. And, uh, and we've been together for 12 years, but I've been here for 10. Well, in many ways, I'm very protected. I'm, I'm older, I'm white, I'm middle class, I present in a semi-masculine way, maybe I'm not the butchest guy in the room, but, but people, I don't know why, but they always seem to assume I'm straight until I tell them otherwise, which always shocks me. So I don't experience any overt homophobia, but it's these unseen things and these like discussions that Glenn and I, my husband, have that I think most straight people don't. So we moved to this beautiful Victorian home in Sunbury, and one of the first conversations we had was, could we walk around the neighborhood and hold hands? Which is a very simple thing that couples do. Interracial couples sometimes have had problems with this, but as a gay couple, we were like, will people abuse us, be violent, uh, do vandalism on our house? And we weren't sure. We didn't, we didn't know. We didn't know anybody on the block. And we, in the end, we decided, no, we can't hold hands because we're going to always be looking over our shoulder, and that's not fun. It suddenly takes a very normal, loving thing and turns it into a potential political act, and we just want to hold hands. Mm. We also don't have children, and it was a conversation we had when we first got together, do, do we want children? And it's not easy for two men to produce a child. Uh, it actually gets very expensive to adopt a child. And the laws in Pennsylvania you know, weren't particularly clear. And, but the thing that finally decided it for us that we would not is even if we had a foster child, whatever, we're not just bringing this child into our home, we're bringing them into our community. And it may be a community that is intolerant or even hostile mm. towards a child who has two dads. And it wasn't fair to that child. And maybe if we lived in Boston, if we lived in a different place, we could, would have considered it, but we just didn't, we didn't think the community, we didn't know enough and we didn't believe enough that the community would respect and love our child um, because of the way they would judge us. Mm -hmm. And so it's, a, it's, this, it's this weird hidden pain that I have, that I don't have a child. Uh, and, and I think it's a pain that a lot of, a lot of LGBTQ people have. Uh, and it's not just because I want a child, I want a child who's gonna be happy and, and, and you know, accepted in the society. And, and, and I don't know if that could happen here in Sunbury. I'm hoping, but maybe for two women it might be easier, but for two men, it's a different level. Again, I don't experience any overt homophobia, but like there's a funny thing that happens all the time when we go out to eat. After the meal's done, it doesn't matter if it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, doesn't matter if it's a romantic dinner on Valentine's Day. They'll come at the end of the meal and say, so will this be together or separate? Mm -hmm. Which I just thought that happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. And then I mentioned it to my sister who's straight. And I said, when you go out to dinner with your husband, how often do they say this? She's like, what are you talking about? It's like, yeah, do they, when they say separate or together, she goes, oh no, they always just hand it to him. It's never separate or together. Uh, she says it makes her angry because she thinks like she makes money too. Why don't they ever give it to her? And I realized that it was something, it's what's called heterosexism. 
and um, and that it's it's not homophobia. It's like they're not being mean to us, but it's kind of assumed everyone's straight until otherwise proven. Mm -hmm. And even in restaurants we've been to multiple times on Valentine's Day, they don't see us as a couple. And either because they don't see the possibility of gay couples, or they don't want to offend us by assuming that we're a gay couple, as if it were an offense to have two people be assumed that they are in a loving relationship. And so it's nothing that's causing me great pain or distress, but every single time, it's a kind of reminder, like, you're not really seen here as a couple. 